Hi everybody, I uh, just want to do a quick review of the trading day uh, and try to get some uh, advice here and think about uh, what was going on um, essentially for uh, the day of October 25th. Um, so you can see that most of the move uh, was in the start of the morning here. Um, you can see uh, essentially that this move here uh, started about th just at 3,800 3, and then ended um, up here about 40 points higher. Um, so that was a pretty good sign. Um, and then that basically took us into the start of the day. So that was around 10 o'clock. Uh, you can see right here at 10 o'clock um, that that started to taper off and then things kind of entered this no trade zone um, in here. So basically no trade zone means that there's just a lot of uh, fluctuations uh, kind of staying in a certain range. Um, so that started uh, pretty much down here at uh, 38.41 and then went up uh, another almost 20 points, uh, maybe even, uh, yeah, about 20 points or so. Uh, so up to 38.70, um, so maybe 30 points. But uh, but basically fluctuated in that area for the most of the day, um, so it's a little bit hard to trade uh, for that part. Um, one of the reasons is that there were so many earnings reports that came out today. So many good trades are based on when there's higher volume. Uh, that volume could be positive or negative. This is a volume oscillator here, so you can kind of see uh, different periods throughout the day. There was some periods uh, in the middle of the day that were pretty good. Uh, you can see uh, there was kind of a downward trend here uh, with a volume spike of a downward that might be pretty good in here. So you can see kind of a couple spikes of negative volume uh, in the middle of the day that made for this section kind of being a good trade zone. <coughs> and then right at the end of the day, at the start of the day and the end of the day, you usually have good trading. Um, usually I neglect the blue line uh, from the start of the day. Uh, in general, you want to see your above zero uh, to be good trades. These are uh, bad trades uh, and below zero. So um, that's measured basically with the oscillator of uh, 816 here. So you can see a short cycle of eight and long cycle of 16 um, comparing those. So, uh, but you can see there's another kind of an upward trend uh, right at the end of the day that was pretty good trading. And, but in general, this was pretty slow uh, in the middle of the day um, and kind of uh, even uh, for the most part, didn't really rise much like it did at the start of the day or at the end of the day. Now, so the market just opened up again here in the futures uh, markets. You can see there's kind of a drop uh, after the earning reports of both uh, Microsoft and Google. Um, but uh, you can see that throughout the day, this is kind of what I mark as a no trade zone just because it's kind of fluctuating uh, only less than a point uh, per minute. So uh, a point can be pretty significant. Uh, there's about four units within one point, uh, four ticks. Uh, so the way that that works is on the ladder, um, even though there is only one point, so you can see that there's not much fluctuation here, but one point is essentially four ticks. So you can see the ladder kind of move up and down uh, there on the ladder. But uh, but in general, the big trades are these oscillations between the high and the low zone. So you can kind of see um, this might have been a good positive trade. This might have been another good positive trade. Um, here up into that point. So um, there is some room for trades during the middle of the day. Um, it's just hard. So, you know, what I'm trying to do here is basically figure out um, where the good trades are, where the bad trades are, um, and kind of focus on where to make uh, the most money on the trades. Um, so you can see the MACD helps a lot with that. Um, a volume oscillator, which I really like to use, uh, does help as well. You can kind of see that Right at the start of the day, there was a couple of volume moves that started with pretty negative and went to positive. Now, I don't like the negative to positive moves. You really want to look for um, slow moves to positive or slow moves to negative, um, meaning you either have or a fast move to negative or fast move. So uh, it really it really depends on what you want to call support or resistance, right? So when it fluctuates here for a while. You can see that it's level of support or resistance, um, another kind of um, less support, but this is perhaps more support and resistance in that area, um, but the volume um, wasn't there. So uh, sometimes you just need to have 
a significant amount of volume uh, in that range to say that it supports. So that's why I use uh, just a straight up volume oscillator. It doesn't really matter if it's positive or negative. That way you can take a look and see where the most volume is independent of it being positive or negative. This one keeps track of that uh, positivity of the volume or negativity. So you can see there was quite some positive volume in this range and then kind of oscillated back to zero. Um, so if you get a bunch of fluctuations, uh, both positive and negative, then you get a zero. Or if you just get low volume, you can also get zero. So that's the problem with this indicator is that it kind of shows, uh, it mixes up the uh, high volume and low volume ones. If they oscillate in certain ways, you can get a zero volume, even though it's not technically zero volume. So there might be some good after hour trading coming in here. You can see that this was quite a drop uh, to start with um, into the close of the session. And then you can see another big jump around 3 p.m. So you can see in the futures market here that uh, this drop was pretty significant um, right off the bat. Um, and these happen within minutes. So it's really tight uh, trading. Um, you can see this is you know just one minute here, two, three, four, five minutes. Five minutes, you can have a huge turnaround. So, um, and then a turnaround again here on the MACD. You can see this circle here and then kind of coming back up positive again. So the MACD does change quite radically. Um, and you can see those moves uh, pretty easily on the MACD. So you see on the daily chart here that we do have a little bit of a red candle showing up, meaning uh, the gap between the signal line and the MACD line is decreasing. So we do, that would suggest that we are slowing down a little bit here and even coming into negative territory uh, for this next day here. So if you look at the chart, uh, you can see this is uh, technically considered the 26th, um, but today was still green. So uh, at least in the futures market, uh, it's looking not so great uh, for uh, the next day here, the 26th. So we are seeing the volatility uh, average to range here kind of decrease a little bit. So we could see uh, that at about 106 points for tomorrow. So if we're to measure that uh, on a measurement here, you can see 100 points um, from here is about, uh, let's see, right there, two point six percent so right there is 2.6 percent uh it's a little bit of a move could be down uh and then it also could be up so 100 points is 2.6 percent so the weekly chart is pretty important to look at uh, just because we need to think a little bit about this whole week and next week um, you can see that we do have potentially a macd crossing uh coming in here so if we can get a little more positivity um, it's possible uh, that we could hit some positivity and negativity in this next week, uh, meaning that uh, we kind of bounce close to the signal line, but still pretty negative. So we'll probably come up and cross a little bit and kind of, uh, you know, balance out here around uh, 4,000 range. But um, that means that we'll still see, even if it is below the zero line here for quite some time, we can still see some downward trends. So it should take some quite some time. Um, you know, this is at least until the mid of November uh, to get back to the zero crossing. So that's quite some time um, to prove um, that we are in a positive trend. Um, and even then, we haven't really seen a positive trend um, like we did until basically 8.15. So this was 8.15. That was the highest trend that we saw on the MACD um, and then it really got shut down right then. So it just made it to the top here and then reversed. If that happens, um, it's possible. So you can see on the chart here um, that the MACD on the weekly um, never really even made it up past that uh, positive sign. So never made it to the zero line here, um, which really says uh, some slowing down uh, in the economy. So the daily chart shows this a little bit more clearly um, you can kind of see that uh, basically it shows um, some signs of being pretty high here, but these other two moves were pretty high uh, as well. So really we're looking for a comparison between where we are now, um, this whole downtrend that we saw here uh, versus this downtrend and that downtrend.
So if you look carefully at the chart here, there's actually a third possibility right in here where this kind of uh, went up similarly, went a little bit positive and then curved back down. So that is totally in the case of what we are seeing here, right? This is most similar to this here. This was kind of a slower uptrend. Uh, this is a fairly fast reversal and then a very fast downtrend. So if we see that, you know, we are in earning cycles right now and you can say that maybe each one of these humps are kind of due to earnings reports. Um, and if the earnings, which didn't look spectacular uh, for Google or Microsoft just today, um, if those go down, then, you know, this whole thing can go down too. So if you look at this uh, carefully, we're kind of at a similar approach um, of these two. I would say we're a little bit more similar to this one here. Um, we see an uptrend uh, followed by a couple like this red candle here, um, right about the same level uh, as this uh, little red candle. And so what happened here is that this basically we went up uh, and then followed by a pretty major downturn. And that downturn actually was the worst that we have seen. So. Uh, that's kind of scary to think about that we could see a pretty sizable upturn and then the worst downturn that we've seen. So uh, this was pretty bad here, but you can see it wasn't quite as bad, uh, this downtrend here recently, um, as this one earlier that we saw back in the start of the year around 3.30. So uh, that was pretty bad um, and then had a kind of a mini upturn and again. So... Uh, when you compare these two, um, it's maybe more likely that we'll see uh, maybe an uptrend. Um, and that uptrend didn't get even as high as this uptrend here. So we are seeing a higher uptrend uh, from peak to peak here. So that that's good news. Um, but uh, and then the downtrend wasn't as low. So, you know, there is that side of the perspective saying that, hey, we could make it uh, quite a bit higher than this this trend here but with these first couple candles you know you're starting to see uh, some negativity here um, doesn't look so great um, we kind of expect a faster uptrend um, which we do see um, now uh, as opposed to this uptrend here so but we just crossed zero here um, and we are in a pretty good uh, uptake here so it's still it's still looking like we could uh, do pretty well um, you know we're still in the uptrend and it just depends on what happens in the next few days here now in the last month uh, we definitely seen uh, some companies having some major struggles uh, you know one month of the year is only one twelfth of the year and we certainly have uh, things dropping in many of these companies especially in uh, consumer cyclical auto manufacturers Tesla dropping quite a bit and TSM so um, I would say the big concerns here are looking at uh, CVS here um, you can see CVS down uh, quite a bit uh, 5.6 percent and then many of the other pharmaceuticals struggling uh, but particularly CVS going down this past month um, and then you can see TSM dropping quite a bit uh, on semiconductor so those are pretty big concerns uh, and then all the utilities you can see uh, pretty much getting hit pretty hard um, and that's pretty big concern as well uh, a lot of people uh, try to invest in utilities uh, but uh, with the rising interest rates maybe that's uh, causing some problems there so you can see this past month that basically uh, the energy related companies here um, doing quite well um, Exxon Mobil here, Chevron, um, these guys, and then you can see a couple biotechs, Biogen doing pretty well, uh, Netflix doing pretty good, and then some struggles on uh, Netflix, or, excuse me, Tesla as we already discussed, Crown Castle, um, and some others. So, and then you can see in the utility sector uh, quite a number of these uh, kind of struggling on the negative side. Um, but you can see in the lower panel here, this shows pretty much all the uh, different sectors. Uh, you're going to see um, each sector separately. So as we look at the volume over the past month, uh, these few days, you can see um, basically we had the highest volume back here on the 13th. Um, that was pretty high volume. And then also here on the 21st, um, being pretty high. Um, and then you saw two negative days. Um, primarily this day on the 14th being pretty negative and then also the 18th being pretty negative so you can see 
um, that there was quite uh, some negative volume uh, even on these days. So this was a positive day for the most part. Um, you see that there was also a major downtrend followed by a big uptrend. So it's kind of a nullified uh, there. But uh, you can see falling day was negative, uh, perhaps signaling that uh, this should have been a negative day uh, on that that day there so that's a big concern um just remembering back what happened on the 13th and 14th um you can kind of see um that that uh, upward trend downward trend kind of said uh, quite a lot about uh what could happen uh, in the next month or so or even a uh, week and you see for the u.s stock market here is some of the earning reports um listed here microsoft google uh, Visa, uh, Coca-Cola. So a lot of them looking pretty good. I was pretty disturbed about Google's earnings uh, just uh, looking like their EPS is dropping quite a lot. Uh, so they have some new expenses uh, they're saying are causing the problem. But seriously, um, that is kind of a concern. Of course, being positive is great. Um, so they are positive EPS, but um, still getting closer and closer to zero. So $1 a share, um, you know, it's uh, a little bit of a concern. I think uh, a lot of people are a little bit concerned about that. So, and you see General Electric also being down quite a bit here. Um, you see most of these others doing pretty good. Um, but that was today's earnings. Um, we still have more earnings to be released this week. You see Apple coming out here. Uh, Amazon, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, ExxonMobil, um, and some Chevron, uh, Facebook. So quite a bit, um, we probably expect um, just with Google's earnings to be down that micro, uh, Meta will also be down a little bit uh, lower than estimates. Uh, you can see their estimate was $1.90, um, so probably quite a bit lower than that, um, maybe, but who knows. Um, so it'll be just interesting to see, but certainly with uh, Google's uh, earnings reports not looking super great, um, that should be a concern in my opinion. So you can see on uh, the news feed here that basically uh, Google News is pretty much the top here. It says Alphabet misses earnings, YouTube shrinks, company will cut headcount growth by half in a quarter four. So looking like uh, they are going to try to uh, not hire as much. Um, so that's quite a bit of a difference. Um, and uh, you can see YouTube ad revenue also not being so great. So. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of news here. You can see Microsoft also uh, stock slips as Asia growth slows and cloud sales miss projections. So not so great, um, I would say. Uh, and then you can see there's other economy news, uh, new uh, prime minister in the UK and stuff like that. So, uh, but it should be interesting to see uh, what happens. So really the big move that we saw uh, was on the 23rd. Um, so last week, basically uh, Friday, that was a pretty big move still, and that um, really brought us up quite high um, into the levels that we're at right now. So these other moves um, are kind of uh, not so big. Monday was kind of a mixed move, as you can see, not much of a move on the pricing chart and not much move on the volume either, kind of staying flat because we had positive and negative, and then we can see a little bit of a positive move today. Um, so that kind of looks like it's pretty good. Um, surprisingly, uh, compared to most of the other days, you can see that this move was uh, quite solid, um, looking back uh, quite a bit um, even today. But of course, Friday's move was even more. So um, basically, um, I'm not sure if there's a lot of truth behind these moves, um, which is one question. Um, you know, how, why are we seeing less of a positive move and not more of a positive move um, after the earnings. So we still see positive move, but not as positive. So really the funny thing here, you can see this also on the MACD, um, that today's move was quite high. Um, if I do a horizontal cross line uh, in yellow here, um, you can see that this move was quite a bit above uh, everything else. So, man, uh, we saw this big jump. That happened within a couple of minutes, uh, really. Um, the main part of the move today um, and that kind of turned the whole positive day so the that basically these couple minutes and I was watching it when it happened it's kind of hard to say that just those minutes would be constitute uh, being so much better than the whole rest of the day so 
the earning reports didn't come out during those minutes. The main part of the day was actually the end of the day where after the earnings came out, then the, the price of the futures started to drop. So that's a debate. Um, why were this high? So I think a lot of this buying in was just assumption here that the uh, you know earnings were going to look good. And now you can see after the earnings have come out that we're actually dropping lower. So uh, we're actually even crossing on the MACD there. So you can see on the volume profile that we're also dropping we're below the signal line we're actually in negative volume right now um so it's not looking good um necessarily um but there is still some really positive forces in the market this is not to be questioned with that we still had a very positive day on friday um that was well before earnings now we're starting to see visibility into all the earnings um and certainly after this week um, with Apple's earnings being reported as well, and Facebook, we should start to know. So um, certainly if we get positive news uh, on, uh, I think Facebook is more of a one to watch because it's more in the software industry, whereas Apple, more in the hardware industry. So uh, the rest of the software industry is very important to the stock market, and many of these companies aren't just software related, like Microsoft and so on. So, um, but, uh, we did see a pretty positive move here, so, um, but it's kind of going down now. So the, may, maybe we'll see another positive move tomorrow um, at a lower level. Um, so it could be tapering off, um, and then even, um, you know, waiting kind of for the uh, earnings reports of some of the biggest companies like Apple. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the study of the stock market going on for the twenty fifth. Let me know if you got any suggestions or ideas. I'd be glad to talk this over with you. Um, be sure to like and subscribe and put a comment down below and I'll try to reply back. Thanks so much. See you.